In this video we're going to review how to make a normal probability plot or sometimes called a QQ plot. A normal probability plot is a graph that you can use to see whether your sample is normally distributed or not. The first thing we need to do to make a normal probability plot is take our sample data and list it in order from smallest to largest. We can do that either by sorting the data or by using the Excel rank function. We're going to try using the Excel rank function. What the rank function does is takes a value from our set of data and gives its rank in another set of data. So for example if I type equals rank and then put the left hand parentheses the first input is what number you're ranking. The number I'm ranking is this first return and then you type a comma and next is the reference that you're ranking it against. Well what we're doing is ranking each of these returns within the whole returns data set. So for the reference I'm going to select all of the returns by clicking on the first one and then using control shift down arrow to select the rest. I want that to be an absolute reference that stays constant when I copy this rank formula down. So I'm going to use the F4 key to switch it to a absolute reference. <clears throat> the last thing for the rank function is what order you want to rank them in. We want to rank them in ascending order so that the smallest one is number one, the next smallest one is number two, and so on. So I put a one to indicate I want ascending order. Put the right hand side of the parentheses and enter the formula. So this means that 43.81% is the 82nd from the smallest return. To copy that formula down to get the rank for all the returns, I select the, formula, the cell with the formula and then either drag down at the bottom right hand of the selection or double click and that copies the ranks. So here number one right next to negative 43.84 percent that means that's the smallest return in our list. After ranking the data we find the quantiles. Quantile is the decimal version of a percentile. So if a value is the 50th or 0 .50 quantile, that means that 50% of the data in the data set is less than that value. There's a couple different formulas for calculating the quantiles. The one we're going to use is the, set, is the rank divided by the sample size plus 1. So to do that, we need to find out what our sample size is. You know, how many returns do we have in this list? So up here, I'm going to use a count function to figure that out. The count function just counts how many cells in a range have data. So equals count. Select the first one, control shift down arrow, and then type the right hand parentheses, enter. So there's 85 returns in this data set. If you don't want to use the count function, you can just look and see. We start on row 4, and we go down to row 88. So that means there's 85 returns in the data set. So again, the formula for the quantile is the rank divided by the number of returns plus 1. So we're going to be dividing all these ranks by 86. So equals, type, click on the rank, divided by 86. Now I can copy this formula all the way down by double clicking on the bottom right hand of the selection box. And the next thing we need to do is translate those quantiles into a a Z value. So this means in a standard normal distribution what Z value corresponds to that quantile. In other words, what Z value is greater than for this first row 
95.349% of the values in a standard normal distribution. To find that, we use the norm.s.inverse function. norm.s.inv. This is just the inverse norm function for the standard normal distribution. It takes one input, and that's the quantile. So there's that function. Equals norm.s.inv, and then the input is the quantile. Copy that formula down by double clicking. Now I'm going to add borders to this data by selecting it with Control Shift down arrow, adding the borders. This is all the data we need to make the QQ plot. The QQ plot, or the normal probability plot, has the Z values on the x-axis and the actual data, so the returns on the y-axis. And it's a scatter plot. So to start it out, I'm going to select the data from the y-axis, which is the returns, with control shift down arrow, scroll back to the top, and insert a scatter plot. Now this isn't the final result, I still need to add some things to this. I need to add the z values over here as my x variable. So anytime you've created a chart and you need to edit it a little bit, you can right click somewhere on the chart area and you get all these things in the context menu. I'm going to choose select data, pick the data series I've already added, and edit it. The series name will end up being the title of the chart. So I'm type equals, and then in double quotes, normal probability plot. The x values are the z values that I calculated. So to enter that here, I click on the first one, control shift down arrow to select the rest, click on OK, click OK again and scroll back to the top where the chart is. So that's the normal probability plot. If it follows a straight line, or roughly a straight line, at about a 45 degree angle, that indicates that your data is normally distributed. A couple things I'm going to do to this to make it easier to look at. I'm going to get rid of this um, legend, and I want to move my axes. Right now the y-axis crosses the x-axis at 0. I want to move that down to negative 3. So anytime you want to do that, you click on one of the numbers in the axis, right-click on it, and select Format Axis. Over here shows where the vertical axis crosses. I'm going to move it from 0 to negative 3. And now we see the x-axis crosses the y-axis at 0. I'm going to move that down to negative 60. So I right-click on one of the numbers in the y-axis, go to Format Axis, Horizontal Axis Crosses. Right now it's automatic. It's set at 0. Change that to negative 60. Hey, Daddy! And there's your normal probability plot. The straight line indicates this data. The yearly returns for the standard hey, report is 500 appears to be normally distributed.